What's up my friends? Welcome to Pantry Preparedness. My name is Jake and today we're here to talk about fly traps, specifically DIY fly traps. Ones we can make out of things we can find around the house. Now, last week Ricky did a video on this Captivator fly trap that he got from the store and it did an incredible job dealing with all the flies he had around his chicken coop. But I'm not convinced that we got to go to the store and buy something in order to deal with a problem like this. I'm thinking that we can make our own bait, our own trap that can work about as well as this. So I posed a challenge to Rick that within a week's time, I could come up with my own contraption that could compete with what he got. So that's what we're doing. Now we're gonna make three different trap designs, two of which are gonna be made out of two liter bottles, and one is gonna be made out of this mason jar. All things that are pretty easy to come by, let's get started. Now for our first trap, we're gonna use a mixture of apple cider vinegar, sugar, water, and a little bit of soap. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the top off of this two liter and invert the lid so that there's this funnel that the flies can fly down into that they have a really hard time flying back out of. All right, now that we got that cut, like I said, invert the lid. We're gonna push this in here and it kind of stays on its own boat. We're going to apply tape around this whole top lid to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and there isn't any room for the flies to be able to get out. Now, we are going to pour, like I said, apple cider vinegar. About a half cup. About the same amount of water. Put some sugar in there. About a quarter cup of sugar and a little bit of soap, just a squirt. All right, gonna get that concoction all mixed up. All right, we've got our first trap made. Now I'm gonna set this over here and let's get started on the next one. Now our next trap is also gonna utilize a two liter bottle and again, you're gonna need something to cut the top with. But instead of cutting the top off, we're actually going to cut X's up in this top area and then bend in the corners, which is going to allow room for the fly to get in. But those bent corners are going to make it very hard for the fly to get back out. And they're going to have a hard time even seeing the hole to get out. So like I said, we're just going to cut an X. And then bend in the corners of it until you have a large enough hole that a fly can get into, just like so. And then we're gonna do that a few more times. Let's do three of these in the top. Now we're gonna use a very different bait in this one. We're actually gonna use eggs that I broke into a mason jar yep. about four or five days ago and left out in the sun for them to putrefy. Good job. It smells terrible, so I'm gonna wait to put that in here until I'm not in a confined space. But that putrefied egg mixture, which I said is just egg and water, we're gonna pour into the bottom of this, and that's gonna be our attractant for this trap. Now we are gonna wanna keep the lid so we can put it back on the top. So the only way that they can get in or out is through these holes that we cut. All right, so there's our second trap. Now for our third. This is gonna use a mason jar, and we are trying to replicate the design used by Captivator, where we have a black top. We're gonna to make holes in the top, but above those holes in the top, we're going to have a black surface so that when the flies are down inside the jar and they look upwards, they're not gonna see any light showing them a way to get out of here. So, to make the holes in the top of this plastic lid, we're gonna use a drill, and we're gonna drill some holes, just like so. Now it's a lot easier if you put the lid on the jar so you have something to hold on to as you're drilling these in. All right. Now we've got our three holes and flies are attracted to light. When they can see light in a dark space, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for cracks to get into your house, get into whatever uh, environment they're gonna find food. So now we got those holes cut so they can see the light on the way in. Now we need to make that surface above it that makes it so they can't see their way back out. So to do that, we're gonna use a hefty bag. 
just like this one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a circle out of the hefty bag that's going to sit elevated above this. And I'll show you exactly how we're going to elevate that here in just a moment. All right, so we're cutting a circle out of this hefty bag. I'm just going to cut a half circle from the side of the bag. And when I unfold it, I got a full circle. Now you want this circle to be a little bit larger than this. So as it's sitting up above, even from an angle, they're not going to see the light on the way out. You don't want to make it too big because you want them to be able to see these holes from above as they're flying around looking for a way into that attractant. So I think this is just about the right size. All right, done with the hefty bag. Now to get this to elevate above the lid, we're actually going to use the metal lid that came on this. What we're going to do is drill two holes in this lid that twine is going to be able to go up through. We're going to run a string that we can actually hang this whole contraption from. So again, we're going to use the top of the jar to hold this in place while we drill. Now, be careful when taking this off because there's going to be really sharp metal on the back of this lid. Now we're going to tape this lid to the hefty bag. Now I have this tape from a past project when I put new vapor barrier in my crawl space, but electrical tape, anything black will work. But what you want to do is you want to cover this entire surface with something black so that as they're looking up, they're not going to see any light. All right, we got that lid covered, but now we need to find those holes again because we're going to need to be able to push string through them. So with our scissors here, let's poke holes there so we can find our way with that string. All right, now we're going to need twine. What we're going to do is we're going to tie this twine around the top of this jar so that we can hang it. And then those strings reaching up are going to go through these holes. Now I'm going to need something to tie to on the other side as I'm running this string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loop. If you double up your string, go down about eight inches or so. We're going to tie a loop like so, just so we have an eyelet to attach to on the other side. All right, we got our eyelet. Then we're going to wrap this around the jar and tie another knot opposite the eyelet. You want this to be a knot that's not going to slip, so make sure you do a square knot and not a granny knot. And again, make sure it's opposite the eyelet, otherwise it's going to hang crooked. Alright, we got that tied. Now we're going to run this twine through these holes we made. up one side and down the other. All right. And now this is going to hang over the top of the jar, making it so those flies can't see out. Forgot how far we want it to hang. That looks about good. Let's tie ourselves another knot. In case you forgot how to tie a square knot, right over left, left over right. All right, we got that tied. We'll trim off our excess, put the lid that we drilled our holes in on. And now we've got something that's going to work very similar to that captivator trap where they can see down into the holes from above, but when they look back up from the bottom, they're gonna see nothing but black. It's the exact same design that they use in this captivator. This lifts up, allowing holes for them to see down. But when they look up, they see nothing but this black top. So kind of ripping off their design, but if we can do it ourselves, let's save the money. Now for this mason jar trap, we're gonna use dark corn syrup and some hot dogs. Cut those up, put them in the jar, and that is going to attract flies for us. So let's open this up. Add our dark corn syrup. And voila, got our third 
trap done. I'm going to put this lid back on. And we're good. Now this top is kind of semi-adjustable, which is pretty nice. You're able to put it at just the right level so that the flies are able to see in, but can't see out. So pretty happy with how this turned out. All right, now that we got our traps made, we just got to find some fly habitat, set these traps out. We're going to leave them out for 24 hours, come back and check our results, see which trap is working best, which bait is working best. And then we're going to put our best trap to the test against Ricky's in a head on head battle see which one's gonna attract and catch more flies. All right, we have made it to the Hanson family homestead, which is my sister's little hobby farm. We got sheep, we got goats, we got chickens. We got about everything here that attracts flies. So couldn't think of a better place to test these fly traps than here. So we found some spots around the property that'd be perfect for attracting flies. Like this right here. This used to be a hen house and they've seem to not gotten the message that we're no longer laying eggs in here but regardless this still attracts a ton of flies so I'm gonna put that apple cider vinegar soap and water trap with the inverted two liter right here see how it does I can already see there's plenty of flies in the area but unfortunately I don't see any dropping down that funnel on to our next traps we're gonna go into sheet pen here now I have the shaded area for their rams to hang out and get tons of flies here. In fact, here's an old fly trap that they've put up that is just absolutely full and it's actually completely dried out now. So it did its job, but let's put our mason jar with the lid over here. And you can see we got that black plastic over the top of it. So it's gonna keep them from being able to see any light when they look upwards. So this will hopefully work just fine in here. It's been up for a few minutes now and I have yet to see anything quite in it. All right. And then for our third trap, put it over here by the current chicken pen and I can see a couple flies flying around the top of it. Doesn't look like there's and he built up in the bottom, but I've only had these out a few minutes, so not that surprised that I haven't seen many results in any of these. But this should be a really good location. This is the new hen house. They have a little compost scrap bin here. So I can only imagine that we're going to be seeing plenty of flies over here. Well, let's come back in a few hours, check out this evening, see what we find. All right, let's see what we got. We got the apple cider vinegar trap here. Looking pretty scarce, super scarce. Got nothing in there so far. Let's go check out these other two. All right, we got our molasses and hot dogs. And no luck, wow. Incredible given the amount of flies out here. All right, now for our third trap with the putrid eggs. This one's looking better. Look, we got quite a few flies down there. Call that a success. Looks like some of these holes. Could use a little bit more bending open. Let's do that and put it back. All right, it is day two. I am back at my sister's homestead to check on these fly traps to see just how well they did. Let's see what we got. Right up here. We have our apple cider vinegar trap. I see some flies in the area, but only a wasp is actually in there. So, scored a zero on attracting and killing flies. Bummer. All right, on to the next. What's up, dude? Now we've got our jar trap with the syrup and the hot dogs and it has just absolutely nothing in it. Also a bust. Huh. All right, let's check our last trap. I see something in there moving. Looks like quite a few. More than yesterday. Not by a whole lot, but 
still appears to be working. Much better than the other ones. All right, after our first day of testing, there's a clear winner. This one with the eggs inside and the holes in the top is catching way more flies than any of these other ones. In fact, these other two tests haven't caught a single fly, while this one's probably caught four or five since I've been sitting here. So I imagine that this bait is a whole lot more attractive than either of these other two baits. I have a hard time knowing whether or not it's the bait or the design of the jar that's maintaining these flies and bringing them in. So I wanna run one more test. I'm pretty excited about this setup where it's so similar to Ricky's. What I wanna do is I wanna add some eggs to this mix. Now reading online, people say there's all these different attractants. The more you throw in there, the better the results. So I'm going to add on top of the corn syrup and the hot dogs, some more putrated eggs. Man, that stuff smells terrible. It's five, six days old at this point, but it, it has quite a scent, which I imagine is what's bringing in all these flies. So now that we have that added to the mix, I really want to give this another day's worth of testing. Let's get this tightened up, get this mixed up, and I hope to see quite a few flies in this mix tomorrow. If it can bring in more than this is able to add on to it in the next 24 hours, then we might move forward with this design. But man, this one is so effective that it's gonna be hard to beat that with this. So let's put these back out near the animals, come back tomorrow, see what we got. All right, we are back for day three of our testing. Let's see which trap, which bait we're gonna go with for this final challenge against Rick. All right, bottle trap. Let's see how he did. All I'm seeing are hot dogs. It looks like I might have gotten a few flies over here, but only a few. After taking the lid off, I could see I did get a few flies, but surprisingly I got more bees than I did flies. I guess that's not too surprising. Wasps love meat, so. Now let's see if there's any more in this container. Oh, quite a few just spurted up. Looks like a pretty good collection down there. Hard to say if it's much more than yesterday, but quite a few. All right, I'm pretty sure that this bait and this design is gonna be by far our best option. Looking at how many flies are currently on it, I think we got a good chance of beating Ricky with this design. So, I'm gonna wanna reuse this egg mix because it is disgusting, it smells terrible, and that's exactly what the flies love about it. So I'm actually going to strain out these dead flies from this mix and reuse it in another trap that I made. Exact same design, but I was a little bit more careful in how I cut these holes in it because I noticed a few flies were able to fly out of the other fly trap, and I don't want that to happen this time around. So made them a little bit smaller, Hopefully this works even better. Now, I got one more trick up my sleeve. I was reading this scientific journal that was saying that flies react positively towards blue light and vertical black lines. So, I got some dry erase markers. I'm gonna draw a bunch of blue at the top of this jug and then some vertical black lines, hoping that that's going to attract even more flies. All right, we got both these traps set. There's tons of flies everywhere. They definitely like both of these attractants. So let's get them both set. We'll come back in 24 hours and see which of these has captured the most flies. All right, it's been one week since Ricky posted his challenge to see if I could beat his <laughs> store-bought fly trap with things we found around the house. I'm, I'm looking forward to some tacos. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I'm gonna be getting those tacos. All right. Let's see what our conclusion is. All right, mine's looking good from here. I see tons of flies in there. Oh, but wow. yours have just kind oh. of sunk in a bit more. You know, mine isn't looking too bad. No, and there's a ton of flies in there. Wow. So a couple of things I notice with the way the holes are cut, like I am seeing some flies walking back out. So we might just want to play a little bit with that fold there, just making sure that it's harder for them to get out. Totally. But. Dang, this is gonna be, this looks really close. Yeah. 
Well, let's do a measurement. Let's see how they look. All right. All right, Rick, we concluded our test. One of us has a bigger pile. You're the winner. <laughs> I hate losing more than anything, even the stupid little games like this. Yeah. But looking at our baits and our traps, I would say that my bait did really well at attracting the flies. Yeah, I was super impressed, like yeah. seeing how, just how many flies were flying into there. Mm -hmm. I, I think the biggest issue you had was just the flies could find their way out. I think yeah. it's just tough with the soda bottle, cutting it to be able to make it super effective at keeping the flies in. Now, I think I could do a little bit better than I did here, possibly using more of a scalpel, sure. uh -huh. something that I have a little like bit more knife or something. Cut. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then bend them in real yeah. precisely making it that much harder for them to get out. But yep. for me, bait, your bait was a 10 out of 10. I think I, I could smell it too, you know, like <laughs> I, can still smell I think it. it's a little bit stronger. Um, once those eggs get a little bit pungent, um, I think mostly it's the trap design, which is honestly still incredibly effective. Mm -hmm. I think either in a pinch or to save money or you've just got stuff lying around and I got to get, get rid of these stupid flies. Like, I think you've got a great setup. I think so too. It's something that I'll use at home, you know, rather than spending the money. I already have two liters and eggs sitting around the house. <laughs> Might as well put them to use. In my case, I already have these captivator traps that I've bought. I've got several of them. Mm -hmm. So since I have the trap that I know works really well, I think I would go ahead and keep using them as long as they work. Yeah. And then, but honestly, like, I don't know if I'll go buy more bait. I have a few left, mm -hmm. but I think after that, like eggs and water, man. Just rot some eggs. <laughs> it's Pulling, not hard. Who knows if my bait is going to get even stronger, more pungent, attract more flies as those eggs get even more, you know, yeah. fermented. Yeah, which could be one of the reasons why the Captivator bait is used is because it's maybe going to be a little bit more consistent and not get so smelly that they smell worse than the chickens, you know? <laughs> but I don't know. I think it's super effective and I'm certainly willing to give it a try. Nice. So, well... Now I got to go get Rick tacos, but we'll see you all tacos. next time. Let's go get your tacos. All right. How do your winning tacos taste? They're always really good here, but today they have something special added in. It's like this yeah. extra little flavor of victory. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. Mine tastes like defeat. Really? Thought we got to show more. <laughs>